Hello everyone, welcome to Design Hub. In Design Hub, we provide quality technical content related to the design industry using practical concepts. So, to upgrade yourself please subscribe to the channel and press the notification bell to get notified every time we drop a new video. In this video, we will learn about the study types of FEA. Let's look at the different kinds of studies used in finite element analysis. It consists of static linear analysis, nonlinear analysis, thermal evaluation, kinematic analysis, drop test, fatigue analysis, optimization of topology, composite analysis, and frequency analysis. Each study will be taught to you separately. First, let us see the static linear analysis. In order to quickly analyze and iterate designs based on results for stress, strain, displacement, and factor of safety, test designs using linear materials under steady state load conditions. In linear static analysis, the relationship between applied forces and displacements is linear. In actuality, this is applicable to structural issues where stresses stay within the material's linear elastic range. The stiffness matrix of the model is constant in the linear static analysis, and the solving time is relatively quick in comparison to the nonlinear analysis of the same model. As a result, before conducting a complete nonlinear analysis, the linear static analysis is frequently used for a first estimate. Engineers can automatically monitor the effects of design changes with the help of the trend tracker tool that is included. Secondly, we will see as nonlinear analysis. A linear solver cannot be used to perform accurate testing on rubbers, nitinol, plastics, or other nonlinear materials. When applied forces and displacements have a nonlinear relationship, the analysis is said to be nonlinear. Geometrical nonlinearities, that is large deformations, material nonlinearities, that is elastoplastic material, and contact can all lead to nonlinear effects. Because of these effects, the stiffness matrix changes as the load is applied. In contrast, the stiffness matrix was constant in the linear static analysis. As a result, a different solving method and, consequently, a different solver, are needed for the nonlinear analysis. Engineers can accurately analyze designs that incorporate these materials by using nonlinear analysis in conjunction with sophisticated material models. Now, let's learn about the third study type. The analysis of motion also known as kinematic analysis. It utilizes mechanical inputs like, gravity, springs, dampers, forces, etc., and the user-defined constraints, or mates and assemblies to precisely recreate the mechanical movement of the assembly, and give designers reaction forces, position, acceleration, and velocities. Motion analysis can be used to determine, whether the design contains any over-constraints that might limit the movement of the intended component. In motion analysis, rigid bodies are taken for the components. In order to conduct additional stress analysis under these dynamic boundary conditions, the information from motion analysis can be fed into FE structural analysis as loads, or boundary conditions. Let's see the fourth study type which is analysis of fatigue. Engineers can apply a variety of load scenarios, including varying and cyclic loads where peak stress is below material yield. The analysis is performed to test the life of designs due to fatigue failure in order to determine the anticipated design life. Instead of simulating one load cycle as in a static analysis, a fatigue analysis is used to determine whether a structure will fail after a specific number of repeated loading, and unloading, known as load cycles. The components crack somewhere in the component cause the fatigue failure. Microscopic flaws, dislocations, in the crystalline structure of the material, which is typically metal, are the origin of fatigue cracks. The initiation of cracks can be caused by very low stresses. A crack can be started by microscopic dislocations moving forward and backward along the slip plane. This usually happens close to the material surface. Fatigue-related failures can range from minor to major. It is estimated that 80 to 90% of all structural failures are caused by fatigue, with the resulting costs being very high. At low stress levels, catastrophic failure due to fatigue frequently happens without warning. Now, the fifth study type is the frequency analysis. This test, which is also referred to as modal analysis, is used to ascertain the modal shape and natural frequencies of both parts and assemblies. The steady state response resulting from a sinusoidal load applied to a structure at a single frequency is determined using FEA's frequency response analysis. 
It is a specialized form of transient response analysis that solves a particular kind of model very effectively. An engineer must have this knowledge in order to create designs that will be used in vibrating environments, or subjected to vibration inputs. The sixth study type is the thermal evaluation. Engineers can use this test as a tool to study, and comprehend the steady state, and transient heat transfer that occurs via conduction between components as well as through radiation, and convection into the surrounding environment. To determine how the thermal conditions will impact the stress, and displacement in a part or assembly, the results of this analysis can be used in a stress analysis. Solving the heat transfer in or between solids using thermal analysis and FEA is possible. Calculations can be made for heat transfer processes like convection, conduction, and thermal radiation. However, convection and thermal radiation are calculated explicitly by the analyst rather than by the FEA software. When the heat convection coefficient can be assumed to be constant over the surface of the part, or when the coefficient is accurately known, heat transfer analysis with FEA is typically used. Also, thermal expansion and structural stresses resulting from thermal gradients in the part can be calculated using heat transfer analysis and FEA. The seventh study type is optimization of topology. This study enables engineers to specify the bounding box, stiffness, weight, and frequency requirements of the component, and let the software generate the ideal shape to meet those requirements while taking manufacturing constraints into account, rather than developing a design, and validating it. It is an optimization capability that allows the user to find the best distribution of material. With topology optimization, an optimal structure is generated by carving out material from a given design space, allowing for a given amount of material. The eighth study type is, parametric optimization. Compared to parametric optimization, shape optimization is more versatile. This gives designers the ability to quickly test, and refines a design based on variables like dimensions, and materials with predetermined limitations, and overall objectives like weight, strength, frequency, and even manufacturing costs. With the aid of this potential tool, we can design at the highest level without tedious trial and error. So no longer frustrated with unsatisfactory designs. The ninth study type is, buckling analysis. The stability of a structure under compressive loading conditions is assessed by buckling analysis. It will be necessary to use a weight lifting system under compressive loads to test the structure's stability. All of the challenging buckling problems that cannot be resolved manually can be solved using the FEA routine called buckling analysis. The most prevalent buckling analysis is linear buckling analysis. Contrarily, the nonlinear approach provides more reliable solutions than linear buckling. Linear buckling analysis is the type of buckling analysis used in finite element analysis. It is used to precisely test the factor of safety against buckling failure of a design, by analyzing, load-bearing structures that are subjected to, compressive forces. The tenth study type is, drop test. It offers a simple-to-use tool for simulating the effects of component and assembly drop tests. A drop test analysis is used to determine how a design will respond to the impact. The engineers will be able to fully control the impact surface, height, velocity, and angle of the drop. Using each of these tools assists in achieving results while protecting the prototype design and saving money. The 11th study type is composite analysis. Compared to traditional metallic structures, composite systems have a lot more variables. The composite analysis is used when dealing with materials like fiberglass or carbon fiber. By switching to composite structures, you can investigate improved stiffness and strength-to-weight ratios, simpler manufacturing techniques, and more creative design options. This study enables engineers to specify fiber orientation and layup schedule for their designs when designing with materials like fiberglass or carbon fiber. The findings offer details on interlaminar stresses, stresses at each layer, and findings specific to composites. The 12th study type is, dynamic evaluation. The phrase dynamic FEA, refers to a variety of powerful, and effective simulation methods that can be used to analyze even sophisticated engineering systems. Dynamic analysis is used to design around potential noise, and vibration issues or to assess the effects of transient loads. 
The testing and evaluation of a program using real-time data execution are known as dynamic analysis. Instead of repeatedly reviewing the code offline, the goal is to find errors in a program while it is running. It enables testing of components and assemblies response spectrum, random vibration, harmonic analysis, and modal time history. This kind of analysis can produce outcomes like a transient response, peak response, stress, acceleration, and displacement. That is all for this video about study types of finite element analysis. You will be taught each study type with an example and how to perform the respective analysis. Thanks for watching. Until then learn and grow.